Yes, so uh, I'm going to present a very small uh, webinar or a small video in which few questions which have been asked to me by one of uh, our student or the participant in our course uh, uh, like probably may be useful for the uh, beginner level stress engineers but still uh, they are important questions so let's start one by one uh, in which way sustained case teaches us the most why in the analysis uh, see <clears throat> when I say sustained case I talk about weight and pressure okay or there could be something else which is a spring force let's ignore the spring force as of now because it, it may not come every time or it will not come at the initial stage of the analysis so I'm talking about the initial stage wherein you have done the modeling and you are going ahead with it uh, if you see it uh, for example I, I, I draw a simple column a small column or a small pressure vessel not a column probably I have explained it into the normal teaching or normal course content but still the question has come so I am answering it as well see for example I have uh, got a uh, like a control station over here and the line is going somewhere else. so I'm terminating my analysis at this point let's assume that now when I'm doing this case sustain case it's a weight and pressure so out of this if you consider the pressure part of it the pressure produces longitudinal stress radial stress and the hoop stress out of that radial we ignore we have seen that now this longitudinal stress and the circumferential stress both they are within the pipe and the thickness of the pipe takes care of it so those these pressure driven stresses they do not influence your static stress analysis for short radius or long radius elbow if you have extra long radius elbow 5d 10d 20d then there could be elongation because of pressure or if you have an expansion joint then the pressure can act but otherwise the pressure is being <coughs> taken care by the pipe itself second component is weight now when I talk about the weight I can see to it that weight <coughs> or the weight in terms of force so that is nothing but I can say if it is a force it's nothing but the mass into gravity acceleration I know the gravity always acts towards the earth so my earth is downwards so it is acting towards the earth so this weights the weight of the pipe weight of the commodity in the form of point load or uniformly distributed load always acts towards the gravity or earth so I can predict the behavior of the piping I don't need a you know detailed uh, knowledge of engineering even a layman a carpenter or any kind of uh, goldsmith not goldsmith uh, the other kind of vendors they can also predict this kind of uh, uh, situations that they know that if there is a weight the pipe would sag like this if there is a support it may not sag here if there is a support here and here the pipe can sag like this so at the end of the day I can tell you that if the pipe is sagging beyond the limit or there is a bending in the pipe the simple remedy is I can give a rest support so in short I can tell you the behavior of the pipe in sustained case can be predicted by a junior stress engineer or any kind of stress engineer so I can see that if this is my x-axis this is my y-axis then at this nozzle if the node connecting nodes are proper it means this is node and the equipment side is connecting node then I should get the FY force as negative y right now once I get this negative y and if I suppose if I see the restraint summary at this node number so I am getting in force if I suppose minus 100 Newton okay now I heat this system and this system goes to say temperature of 200 degrees Celsius what is going to happen <clears throat> this is my anchor point this is at ambient condition so there is no growth so my growth will start from this that's why we take anchor at tan line 
so this is my growth in vertical direction so if if at all there is a support at this point the ex, the the equipment will lift off and the piping can take this kind of shape now in such a case what has happened the negative load onto this support for example over here which is minus 100 in sustain case this may become zero because the pipe has lifted off so now this support is not taking load right now in such a cases i get this and now if i see this nozzle loading as well i have suppose in sustain case i am just changing it say minus 200 newton and in operating case which is w plus p plus t if it is plus 300 newton then i can identify the contribution of the temperature so this is my w plus p which is because of dead weight this support is now not not taking any load so i can <coughs> see that the w plus p plus t minus w plus p which is nothing but 300 minus minus 200 so total contribution of the thermal load could could be 500 okay now out of this 500 contribution the otherwise load which i was having when this support was active was 200 now this support is inactive so part of this 100 will get transferred but still that would have made this instead of 200 say 250 but it is now 500 so it is a clear evidence that the additional load which i am getting because of this as because of temperature so there is no sufficient perpendicular leg against this long leg so as to absorb the expansion or the thermal forces because of temperature and this is how my base case always is a sustain case so whenever you want to check any behavior of a piping system you always make sure you always make sure that your sustain case is proper now further one thing i can tell you when you are doing uh, your modeling and uh, if you see the sustain case at this point you must get a negative load if you do not get the negative load in sustain case so there are two possibilities either your node and connecting node is not proper you must have node on piping connecting on equipment then you should get negative load in sustain case if not then there could be effect of fulcrum fulcrum in the sense like you know weight imbalance for example you don't have this support present and you have a support available at this point then there is a chance because of this dead weight this pipe can sag down like this and there could be such a kind of behavior so this portion of the piping wants to go down and this makes this equipment to lift this is not a good way of modeling or uh, good supporting i would say so sustain case gives you a lot many things and that's why this is the base case and you must see the sustain case first before going for any other case i hope i have answered this question i'll move to the next one next question is for pipe rack analysis what is important information required for analysis what are the steps for completing the pipe rack analysis see any analysis what you are doing for pipe stress you need this five basic documents one is pnd diagram second is piping material specification third is isometrics or ga drawing fourth is vendor drawing for equipments and fifth is line list okay so this is a common set of input for all so even for pipe rack analysis this is required now when you go to the ga in this part pipe rack ga is important because it tells you if this is my pipe rack in this pipe rack what location we have the anchor bay because it may be possible that you are working in an existing system or you are making a new system or new project itself so at the initial stage of the project itself the pipe rack base might have been finalized so when you are doing any kind of analysis on pipe rack if any line is being routed here then 
the anchor must fall either this location or this location typically when the line reaches over here the anchor must fall here or here you can stagger the anchor sometimes if you have extra bay then you get one more position for the anchor the second thing is that the expansion loop so pipe rack tells you what is the expansion loop location this should be ideally in mid of the two anchors sometimes it is not possible one bay here and there is okay second thing you come to know how much overhang you can have and what is the perpendicular leg needed to absorb the expansion what pipe rack is doing it is nothing but you have the two anchors in front of each other and whatever is the expansion of this in between line to take the expansion of this long leg you have a perpendicular leg to take the expansion of this long leg you have a perpendicular leg and you join this so this length is important against this anchor in addition to it you have to check some other points such as uh, what friction factor you should check because generally if number of lines running on pipe rack are less than equal to 4 then friction is taken as 0.3 but if it is more than 4 say 5 and up mu is taken 0.1 this reason is because uh, all the lines do not move together uh, they may not move in the same direction as well so this could be a uh, instruction or design basis as well then in pipe rack you have to do the analysis with friction and without friction as well with friction gives you the maximum force and without friction or low friction gives you maximum displacement then few other points such as if the 2d loop is not sufficient so sometimes you may think about going as a 3d loop but generally the 3d loop purpose is because you want to allow the neighboring lines to pass if they do not need a loop anyway this has been very in-depth discussed in manual calculation where pipe rack is been taught even how to calculate this expansion loop by manual calculation that we have done into our lecture or in our course so for this uh, uh, answer to this question i think i have given a good answer to you steps wise if you ask me the same thing you have to model it first a pipe rack break it into the pieces you can use the multi break command uh, then you can identify the anchor locations you can give the anchor or axial stops at these points uh, if the pipe rack loop is already been given by the designer you can model it or else you can decide the location of the loop considering this boundary condition how much overhang is possible then run the analysis with friction without friction do not forget to give guides near to the loop but do not give guide very near to the elbow if it is quite near this reduces the flexibility of the elbow and then you can give alternate rest and guide so these all other instructions already have been covered so i think now we can move to the next question <coughs> In continuation with the previous question, the, the next question is a line running on pipe rack in which condition we apply triaxial support, rest guide and axial stop on one support location on this line. Please tell how we apply or decide triaxial support locations. Okay, fine. See, first of all, let's understand why triaxial restraint or anchor is needed on pipe rack. Uh, just imagine a straight line or a straight pipe rack uh, without any anchor so it's a long run I am just putting it pretty close to each other and uh, there is a line running on it from this position uh, it's all along say I am taking a tapping of out of this line and this line coming down and it is getting connected to three number of pumps so this is the plan view what I have drawn if I do not give any kind of axial stop then what will happen the axial stop will get automatically formed at the mid of the pipeline 
definitely depends on how the lines are going but let's assume that both the lines at both the ends they are turning like this so i can say that the anchor will automatically get formed at the mid section this is the natural anchor so wherein we also call it as a null point now with this null point uh, the displacement of this tapping is dependent on suppose the tapping is being taken for at this point and there are two pumps like this this displacement will be very high now because of this displacement the thermal loads will get introduced onto the pump so though there is a natural anchor onto it and i can keep the line as it is these displacements are based on temperature and material whether it's a carbon steel or stainless steel let's assume that at 300 degrees celsius i am getting this displacement here as say 200 mm then if you look at this and here i am getting suppose 100 mm so the forces on the pump could be different different in the sense this is having 100 so if i try to give you an isometric view this is the line the line the tapping is being taken it is going down there is a pump here so this displacement if it is 100 then in such a cases the loads will be maybe within the limit or little exceeding but if this displacement is 200 then there are chances that these pumps can go under tremendous amount of forces and moments at the same time the stress at this point could be high because you already have the stress intensification factor this is one reason we need a fixed point so i can decide the fixed point suppose i have this kind of system that instead of having a fixed point at this point i can think of shifting it at the center of these two pumps so that i may get a typical kind of behavior at this step and this is one of the possibility i am telling you so that the root can be seen as identical so this is one reason for that second reason is very long displacement can make sure or can uh, just a okay now once this anchor is decided the second uh, condition on which the anchor location is decided is nothing but the movement of the end connections so generally what we prefer whenever the line changes the direction it should have the displacement less than 75 mm 50 to 75 reason is very simple it should not hit the neighboring line crossing or running parallel there is a chance that this line may have a temperature which is high the neighboring line may have a temperature low so they should not interfere or they should not have a clash now once uh, this is been decided the second could be based on same basics and then in between two anchor we can have this nowadays we do not provide a physical anchor on pipe rack we provide a triaxial restraint now what do you mean by triaxial restraint is nothing but you have a pipe which has got a shoe like this and this shoe is running on a steel beam so you provide a guide on either side and a stop in front and one stop in back so if i just try to show you the front view and top view sorry side view so this is the shoe this is my i beam so i am looking from this direction i can put the axial stops on either side which can be welded to the shoe the shoe is welded here to the pipe and uh, there could be a guide which otherwise you can see in side view so if i see for side view from here so i can see the circle of a pipe shoe like this the beam going on and a guide like this 
Now this is called traction. The complete anchor means the shoe itself welded to pipe as well as structure. So there is a welding at this point and over here then this becomes a complete anchor. So when there is a complete anchor all the six degrees of freedom which is nothing but uh, you can say all the three displacement dx dy dz and all the rotations rx ry rz they all are bound but in case of triaxial restraint only dx dy dz are bound and moments that is the rotations they are free that's why the moment bending moments do not get transferred transferred onto the steel structure that's why this is being recommended so these triaxial restraints are being given based on this kind of analysis in case you do not have any kind of uh, you know uh, uh, loop in between and the line is running straight onto the pipe rack without having any disturbance and a temperature is moderate then you can give the axial stop at the center or the null point as well so that it takes the minimum load it will have mainly the load from the earthquake or wind occasional factor because thermally this is a neutral point null point so thermal loads are not expected so only you will have the frictional loads and the loads because of seismic or wind fine so let me go on to the next question how to model vessel clip or vessel clit uh, and how to calculate the loads see vessel clip or vessel clit generally it is taken for a column kind of vessel wherein you have got a huge vertical displacement of the column and the line is running like this so if you give an independent support then in such a case is what happens when the column expands this nozzle goes up and if you have given the trunnion or a dummy leg in the cold condition which we they are sitting on to the structure those dummy legs will get lifted off along with the line and there will be a gap and the support becomes inactive an entire dead weight of this piping system will fall onto the nozzle now this topic is also in detail explained in the module where we have you know gone through all these critical systems like columns turbine and compressors i am explaining once again now modeling part of it uh so that's why i take a vessel clit so vessel clit is nothing but i need to take the support from the vessel itself so what i do i take the structure from the vessel this is my column and uh, the pipe which is running for example i show the pipe little out so this pipe trunnion sits on this or there could be a shoe given and this vessel clit is welded to the column so whenever there is a movement of the pressure vessel and the pipe also moves up along with that this support also moves and that's why all the time this support will take the load of the pipe so this the, this lift off which you can see in other way the earlier case which is not there the reason this support was independent say from the ground so this will not move along with the pipe but this support is not from the ground it is from the vessel itself that's why it will move along with the pipe and takes the dead weight so that's the way it is being done now to calculate the nozzle load onto the vessel clit thumb rule wise if you ask me this will be taking exactly the dead weight of this vertical section so what will be the weight so the weight on the vessel clit will be the dead weight of this vertical section and if you have a support here 50% weight say this much weight of this pipe because half the load will go here half the load will go here so thumb rule point of view the 50% of the weight of the horizontal pipe till the first support that will be onto vessel clit so 
that's the way the loads will be but it is advisable that you use computer software to get the actual load because you may have along with the vertical load some of the wind loads acting as well uh, which could be very strong so i suggest to go with the software now modeling in caesar if i want to tell you see what we do we model the center line of the column so this is the center line of the column so this is my nozzle so i just show the pipe by uh, probably red color so this is the pipe which is coming down so what i do i create a node number by break command at this point i take out a rigid element out now this is the diameter of the vessel so i cut this point at this point as well the purpose of breaking the point at this equal to the radius because when i'm modeling this as a rigid element we want to take the radial growth of the equipment that's why this much portion will be hot that is at operating temperature or design temperature based on the load case this will be at ambient this portion now suppose i take the node number such as say 10 say 20 Say thirty. Say forty. Say sixty. Say eighty. Say ninety. So what we do? This twenty to ninety by using a closed loop command, we build a node number. Uh, this entire procedure has been explained in the modules. So I am going through very quick, uh, not showing you Caesar modeling process. and uh, now what i want to if i model direct 20 to 90 then it becomes a frame as if i have welded here as well as i have welded to this point but at node number 90 there is no welding so if you see this previous page this is my node number 90 so there is no welding done as such so it is only resting so restrained at this point is plus y if this is my y axis okay so in such a case what i do is twenty to ninety i break it as a node and connecting node so i give node number as ninety and i connecting node i can give as ninety one so what i have done i have broken the geometry so the clit portion this is the clit portion and uh, this is the trunian which is sitting on it i said that this is 90 and i said that this is 91 so i have broken them so 20 to 91 represents equipment element and 90 you can model a trunian or in our case we are directly i am showing it as a center so you can model a trunian as well that is up to you means you can have this as a pipe element this i am taking this as uh, uh, 85 okay just for sake of understanding so 85 is the center point of the pipe and 90 is the trunian which i have given so this 90 and 90 so i'll be calling one as a node one as connecting node and then i will give a support as plus y so which says that 90 and 91 both will move together only in y direction and there is no restriction on plus y movement so this is independent to move plus y so if there is any lift which is being observed you can clearly observe if you by mistake model it as a y which is not correct then it will take as if there is a u clamp kind of stuff and which cannot this cannot move independently in plus y direction so since it is free to move in upward direction i am giving only plus y and then your friction is 0.3 so this is the way we model the vessel clit so for details you can go through that module of uh, caesar to modeling once again okay i'll move to the next question the question is how to resolve the problem if stress percentage is coming 97 in maximum stress range see the answer definitely depends on the system layout how the supporting is being done 
it cannot be answered just offhand because uh, answer to each system will be different but still i'll try to give you some hints some points uh, let's first concentrate on the stress range word so when i say stress range in load cases what we are observing is if i write a load case as w plus p1 plus t1 which corresponds to t max condition say plus 200 and L2 condition is suppose W plus P1 plus T2 which is T mean condition say minus 20 degrees Celsius and my T installation temperature means wherever I install the piping is suppose uh, 30 degrees Celsius so what I do is I write a load case sustain which is a sustain case then I write independent load cases L1 minus L3 which is the expansion case corresponding to T1 I write L2 minus L3 which is also expansion case T2 and then I write L1 minus L2 this is called expansion stress range case and this is a requirement of a code that your system should be safe in range now when I am writing this case L1 minus L3 so I am considering that from plus 30 degrees Celsius what is the stress status of the system when I reach to plus 200 degrees Celsius. So I am checking the stresses corresponding to the strain produced from 30 to 200. So what I am repeating, I am calculating the stress corresponding to the strain produced up to 200 degree. So if the 30 is installation, then my assumption is there is no expansion, there is no contraction. The system, whatever the stage is, it is in neutral stage unless it has some cold pulls into it. Right now I am uh, ignoring the cold pulls and all. Okay. So the displacement or expansion contraction at this point is zero. Suppose you get some uh, expansion of 5 mm. I am just giving you a hypothetical period for 1 meter pipe. So this comes out to be a strain of 0 0.005. So this strain is then multiplied by stress, sorry, Young's, mo uh, Young's modulus to get the stress so this is the stress at this point based on your uh, piping expansion coefficient material then your guides and all restraints typically you have got the another case which is minus 20 so this is your t1 this is your t2 so this is this case minus 20 now in stress range you are actually doing t1 minus t2 so it means you want to find what is happening if the temperature directly falls down from 200 to minus 20 now this stress range concept has been exclusively in depth explained in our uh, third or fourth module uh, and that has been well appreciated by all the engineers even senior engineers so please go through that module once again so when I have got this stress range, so ultimately what is happening, if the stress from 30 to 20 is suppose plus 200 uh, MPa and stress from 30 to minus 20 is suppose minus 50 MPa. So in stress range you will get a stress of 250 MPa. So now if this is equal to 97% of your reliable then you should go through these two individual cases and try to find out which one is contributing more and accordingly take the action now sometimes what happens if you, this kind of range problems you will find more into negative temperature or lower temperature corresponding to your installation if you have 30 and instead of minus 20 even if you have plus 10 then also it's a contraction of a pipe so in that case what you should check sometimes what happens you have a column or any vessel this is the pipe 
this is going down and there's a rest support here and there is a support over here as well okay so in expansion t1 case wherein you have the positive temperature the pipe is free to move in upward direction so the lift so the stress could be little low but now when you are talking about the contraction this pipe wants to contract and when it wants to contract it wants to go like this and this coming down of the pipe is being stopped and then the stress is very high so when you have a stress range issue my answer to the question is look at the restraints first if any of the restraint is creating trouble for positive temperature then try to give some gaps or give some flexibility or change the uh, layout and if any any temperature is negative check any of the support is stopping the free contraction okay in that case you will get a very high stress and check individual cases try to find out your answer fine so i'll move to the next question the question is for calculation calculating the displacement of a tank nozzle so here the question is being asked on the tank nozzle the fixed point will be considered tank nozzle and tank shell interjunction point to calculate the displacement please confirm very good so uh, he, he wants me to confirm uh, now this is a tank what we do in caesar modeling or even stress modeling we consider the center line so we give a an anchor here we go up to take the vertical growth we have to come in radial way and then we give a node and connecting node so here the question is should we take the anchor at the center or what i can do is that instead of modeling this radial growth can i ignore it and can i consider the tank like this and can i consider the anchor at this point itself so my model is anchor at this point go up give node and connecting node and model like this so the entire radial growth gets eliminated now here answer is api 650 this is a standard for the tank if my memory serves me correct then i think in 2010 there was a new edition of api 650 before that there was no specific formula given to calculate the thermal growth of the tank and at the same time the bulging of the tank so because once you have the water inside the tank can bulge in some angle theta so to calculate this the formula was not given but after 2010 so there is a formula for displacement as well as the rotations by theta so nowadays all the design bases they will be asking you to consider the axial growth and the bulging effect as well definitely it depends on the client to client my personal view on this is uh, if you allow me to write a design basis probably i will not go with this radial growth the reason for that is the tank diameter is always very huge so you have a huge diameter so when you look at this because recently we have done some fe for tank nozzles where the nozzles were punctured very close hardly a area gets affected because of tank loading the nozzle loading a very small area gets affected so if there is higher amount of thermal load a small you know deformation can happen into the tank if the thickness is little low but generally the stress affected area is a localized one so it generally does not affect the entire tank integrity second thing is we have the chair many times you can see the tank also has a chair and a bolts and they may have may have some gaps in between so those gaps are actually given for the radial growth of it of the tank so uh, my opinion says that you can ignore but unfortunately my opinion doesn't uh, has that much weightage as api has so as per api since displacement rotations formulas have been given all new design bases you will find that you have to model the tank from the center line 
take the radial growth take the rotation and do the modeling now when you have a rotation in such a cases then the modeling here is not possible so what you need to do is you need to start from this directly like a pipe, nozzle is modeled as a pipe and you have to give a displacement and rotations to this point so at that time axial growth you should calculate manually put as a displacement and put the rotations if suppose this is my x axis then the rotations and vertical is y then the rotation will be along z axis so this will be say clockwise rotation if the nozzle falls over here so this will be rz negative in caesar because clockwise rotations are negative so you have to give a rotation externally so next question is in vertical suction discharge pump for taking the displacement of the pump what is the fixed point for the pump okay so in short i can say that uh, we have got the vertical suction and vertical discharge so it's top suction top discharge pump in which what we should do um okay so this is my shaft axis and these are my nozzle axis uh now answer to this question is that two different concepts one is what i should consider as anchor point for the thermal growth or thermal displacement and second is actually the point of resolution for forces and moments okay so for thermal moments the suggestion is you need to check the pump drawing how it is and uh, you check the the location of the legs of the pump so if the pump leg is something like this which is not giving you a clear picture where the expansion will start exactly from because it is covering probably the entire casing of the pump in that case the advice is very simple take the center line of suction and discharge and take the anchor over here model the elements and take it so this pump would look like this anchor and uh, generally the neck is not modeled in case of pump because it's a casting you can have a flange and then you take up so this is the anchor point but now the point of resolution for forces and moment then the answer is you have to find the intersection of the shaft and the bigger size nozzle suppose i have got 4 inch and 3 inch so then in such a case the intersection of the shaft and this becomes the point of resolution of forces so shaft and the bigger nozzle intersection is a point of resolution of forces so owing to this and this is given in uh, api 610 or even in nema sm23 so in adhering to this sometimes some engineers what they do they take the higher size nozzle and the shaft as anchor so they will model this as this but i don't suggest this the reason for that is api 610 does not say that that is the anchor for the thermal growth it says that it's a point of resolution of forces and moments uh so i still prefer modeling like this but for resolution i may take this as an anchor uh however it depends on your design basis your counterpart of the client there is no clear instruction for that uh, or design basis for that but these are the two ways what we can do and uh, how people do the analysis okay what is the importance of friction in piping system friction has very large importance in piping system uh see <clears throat> let's understand friction if there is a block uh and there is a pulley arrangement and there is a table so i am putting some weight over here okay 
and this block is weighing suppose 10 kg in mass okay so if it is weighing 10 kg in mass so it means that it is weighing 10 into 9.81 that is 98.1 newton so the force gravity acting on it so mass into acceleration is nothing but the force so it is a 98.1 now if I ignore the <coughs> gravity because gravity is acting here as well then I can roughly say there is a 10 kg force acting in downward direction so if I keep on adding the forces say 1 kg here 2 kg here this block doesn't move but suppose if I add third kg and the block started moving so what we understand the friction factor between the surface is nothing but the 3 kg the force needed for 10 kg so friction factor is 0 0.3 unitless so typically if the block weight gets changed to 1000 the horizontal force I need is 1000 into 0 0.3 Okay, that is 300 kg. Now, in a similar way, you can consider a system. Say there is a pump, there is a valve, there is a strainer, there is a reducer, and there is a pump. And you have given a support over here. Now, in such a cases, in sustained case, W plus P whatever is the dead weight acting on this support say 3000 newton okay if the size is huge then the actual force onto the pump will be 3000 into coefficient of friction which is generally 0.3 for steel to steel contact if you give anti-friction pad then it gets reduced so i'll be getting near about 3000 into 0 0.3 which is 900 Newton load onto the pump in axial direction now this is the way simplistically I can say the friction works now if you want to reduce these loads then what you can do you can give anti friction pad which is say PTFE pad poly tetra fluoroethylene which is a sleeper pad or frictionless pad frictionless means less friction pad which has got mu value as 0.1 so what will happen the load onto the pump will become 3000 into 0.1 which is 300 newton and perhaps this can help you to reduce the loads very quickly onto the pump now this is in sustain case now look at here the anchor at of this equipment is supposed as this point so this the free growth of this equipment starts from here it wants to expand the pipe wants to expand but the support is hindering this free expansion in that case very high amount of thermal load can be on this support which could be 10,000 Newton so in such a case the frictional load of 3000 Newton can act in operating case so this I am talking about operating W plus P plus T so this is how the friction can act similarly if you have a guide over here uh, for example the same thing I just draw in an isometric way and there's a pump so sometimes client may ask you that you give a rest and guide as well and guide also should have a friction now in such a cases now for that matter I change the layout a bit so that we understand it in a better way okay so I just <clears throat> so I have got the root like this now in that case if you have given a guide to control some movement then whatever is the thermal expansion you are having which is being stopped by this guide so that thermal force in horizontal direction multiplied by friction that also will act into axial direction onto the pump so this is how friction will add to the axial loads these are predominant even on the pipe racks that's why a little while ago when i told you that when you're working on pipe rack if the more number of pipes are there we reduce the friction factor 
practically it is not getting reduced but we take only four pipe friction acting at a time we also run friction because friction opposes the movement of the pipe so without friction we run the model so that you get the maximum displacement so without friction maximum displacement with friction you get maximum load so you do both second thing friction helps you to increase the natural frequency of the system so in caesar when you do a dynamic analysis or model analysis there is a frictional stiffness given so if you increase that stiffness value to 1000 which is which we have uh, very well explained in our uh, dynamic course itself it is not a part of static then the natural frequency of the system goes up and that helps you a lot so this is how the friction may help you in the modal analysis okay what are the solutions if the nozzle is failing in loads given by vendor okay so this topic we have in depth discussed in the module where we were talking about wrc uh, 107 and wrc 297 so if if the pressure vessel if this is a pressure vessel and if it is designed under the code of asme section 8 division 1 then if you are exceeding in nozzle loads you can think of checking the nozzle load by wrc 107 so there is a separate calculator in caesar which we have covered in detail in our course uh, wherein you find out all the primary membrane, secondary stresses, all those things have been discussed. So if it passes in WRC 107, then you can send those load to client or the vendor saying that it's passing in WRC. So generally vendor accepts or some consultant, they do not go even to the vendor. They are confident that even if we do it as a stress engineer, this calculation, if this is okay, we can accept. So they accept on their own engineering judgment or uh, uh, they could be client themselves so they can take a decision the second option is wrc 297 which is for the nozzle flexibility so in caesar when you are modeling a nozzle you are modeling it as c node connecting node there's a rigid element here down so nozzle is not taken as a flexible it is taken as a rigid collection that connection so this rigid connection if you go with 297 then you can imagine this nozzle and this vessel there is an imaginary spring dimensionless imaginary spring which has got the stiffnesses in kx ky kz that is the translational stiffnesses and the rotational stiffnesses krx kry krz like it's a node and connecting node anchor itself but this anchor has a flexibility and because of which generally you get advantage in bending moments so your bending moments can get reduced because of this so these are the two very common things which you can use for nozzle failing in this the second option or the next option is you can go for finite element analysis you can use ANSYS kind of software abacus kind of software and you can actually linearize the stresses across the shell and nozzle and then check as per ASME section at division 2 part 5 okay so these are the few options by which you can do it or else if it all doesn't work then try to even eliminate or reduce the nozzle loading by changing the route adding some guides some supports springs all those stuff but these are the general solutions uh, my answers were a little quick but uh, the reason behind it because almost all these questions were well covered in our uh, different different modules uh, still i have tried to give it to a good extent and uh, time constraint uh, for this is say 40 45 minutes so i'm stopping here now uh, if you have any further questions let us know thank you very much